Hey guys, it's Elena and today I'll be showing you how to make this abstract fiber art landscape using my new fiber art brushes for Procreate on the iPad. So let's go ahead and get started. So I am opening up a new canvas in Procreate that is 3000 by 2000 pixels and I'll be working with the fiber art brushes and color palettes which are available for purchase in the link in the description. So this is the fiber art rainbow color palette and I'll be starting out with the felting brushes that come with the fiber art brush set. So I'm starting out with messy solid felt, the, du the dual color version. So this brush takes two different colors. So going to my color palette, I've decided to stick with that green that I had already chosen. And for my other color, I chose this yellow color. So now with these two colors chosen and my messy solid felt brush, I am just coming in from the corner, first with a lot of pressure and then with less pressure where the brush is getting smaller. And I'm just going to continue with a similar motion um, varying the pressure in the stroke from large to small or from small to large on both sides as if these were little bits of countryside, you know, like when you're looking down on a landscape from a plane and you see all these little patches. So now I'm switching colors to a lighter green and a yellow and I'm switching brushes as well to the clean solid felt background. So I just wanted some variety and I've added a new layer on top of what I have just done. So continuing on with the same kind of stroke, I'm just kind of tracing along one of the ones that I did previously and I'm playing around with how much pressure I'm adding and just adding another piece to the patchwork puzzle. And I realized at this point that I should take that layer and put it below the other ones because of the first layer I did was quite hairy and this new layer is clean because I'm using the clean solid felt brush. So it looks better to have that hairy, kind of hairy texture on top. So now I have not changed brushes, but I'm switching colors. So I'm going with more of a deep orangey yellow and then I'm switching to this very light, almost white color. And I'm just continuing with that same clean solid felt background to add more bits and pieces to both sides. And I didn't want, I didn't want each of these pieces to come out to exactly the same place. I wanted it to look more natural like a, a hillside would look. So I'm trying to not have all of the points come to exactly the same place. So now I've added a new layer. And I'm switching brushes to my messy solid felt dual color version again. And I will just continue to build on what I have already started here, continuing to add different contrasting bits and pieces coming from both sides. And at this point I switched color palettes. I decided to go with the Vibrant Fiber Art and it's very similar to the rainbow, but it's just a bit deeper, these colors. So I've got two different green colors selected now and I still have my messy solid felt brush and with that brush I'm just going to continue adding bits and pieces on both sides of the canvas just adding another layer to these hillside bits and pieces and I realized at this point that I should probably start to kind of tie all these bits and pieces together so kind of making the points meet each other at a in the middle and I'm just continuing onward with that, trying to kind of fill in some of these gaps. So now I'm switching colors ever so slightly. I wanted to bring some blue in, so I went with a, a bluish color and a light green. And still with that same messy solid felt brush, I'm just continuing to fill in all the gaps and add bits and pieces here and there. So now I'm going back to my brushes and I will start with a third brush. Up until this point, it was only the clean solid felt and the messy solid felt. 
So I'm switching to one of my favorite brushes in the felting brush set, which is the Loose Curly Fibers, and that is dual color. And I'm adding a new layer and moving that layer down second to the last layer. And this is all kind of guesswork at this point. I do move my layers around a lot. So um, I'm just kind of seeing how this looks, filling it into one of the gaps. And I do still have a light green and a medium blue color in my, um, in my color palette, as I had just chosen last time I chose colors on the previous brush. So I'm just using that brush to kind of fill it in. And so at this point, I kind of decided I wanted to see how that looked underneath of everything. And I did like it better underneath of all the other, the other layers. So kind of what I'm doing with the layers is I'm not being super scientific about it, but I'm just adding a new layer when I do something new, um, a new brush or a new kind of texture. And then I'm just moving it around to see where it fits best. So I'm continuing with that loose curly fiber brush kind of going back and forth and varying the pressure. So it's, some are big and some are small and I'm just building up kind of a messy texture there. So now I'm switching colors. I've chosen a light, uh, an orange, orangey yellow and a goldy yellow. So almost the same color. There's just a slight variation between the two. Um, I did decide that I wanted a fair amount of yellow in this. So that's why I went back to that. And I'm just continuing to fill the gaps. And just continuing on with that same brush, I'm just changing up the colors a little bit. I've got a more blue and yellow here, and I'm just adding a bit more here and there. And continuing to experiment with colors. Now I've got some greens, and I just kind of wanted to fill in some different gaps with this same brush in different colors. So now I'm going back to my colors, choosing a yellow and a green. So I wanted to add more definition to this area that was all becoming a bit more of a mishmash. So I chose the directional line dual color and making the brush a bit smaller. I just wanted to kind of define some of these edges with that yellow green combination. So I'm just tracing a line along where I had different colored hillsides and I just kind of wanted to add these fibers back and forth in this area. So I did really like where that was going. So I added a new layer and then I took that layer and put it above everything else and switching up my colors to yellow and green this time. I continued with that same brush, the directional line, and just did a lot more definition wherever it seemed like it needed it. So, and sometimes like here, continuing along that entire section with back and forth strokes. So at this point, I decided that it was time to add the sky. So I added a new layer and put it below everything else and decided to go with a light blue color for my sky background. And I eventually chose one from the embroidery color palette instead of the vibrant color palette. So I'm just kind of moving around color palettes really. But I went with the cotton fluff brush in the felting. So we're still in the felting. We haven't gone out of the felting folder at this point. But with that brush, I made it really large and I just kind of filled in the background. So now I've gone with a white color. I'm still using the cotton fluff brush. So I haven't switched brushes and I made the brush a little bit smaller. So now I'm using that brush to add the clouds to the sky and I'm where it gets poofier. That's where I'm adding some spurts of pressure. So I start out with little pressure do more and then do little, do less on the sides so that these little blobs end up looking like clouds. So now I'm switching brushes and I went with barely there fibers after experimenting a bit. And that's because I really wanted this not to be quite so clean. 
And so with these barely there fibers still in the same white color that I chose for the clouds, I'm just adding a little bit of texture to each of these clouds. So at this point, I'm not quite done with the background, but I wanted to go ahead and group all of these layers and call them background so that I'm just keeping track of what I'm doing and added a new, a new layer on top of that. So going back to my colors, I wanted to continue with the barely there fibers, but go with the dual color version. So I went with a light green and a dark green and then chose the barely there dual color version. And so I wanted to continue adding some of this same texture to some of these hillsides. So because this is so very yellow, I just wanted to add some of these green fibers in for variety. So now I wanted to switch up the brushes. So I went to Silky Tangle Sparse, not the dual color version. And in my colors, I'm choosing a light green. And with using pressure to make it larger and smaller, I'm adding curls in here and there. And now switching to a dark green color, I'm just continuing to add little bits of curls here and there all over the landscape. So at this point, we still have this large light area and I wanted to fill it with French knots. So I switched to my embroidery folder, which also comes in the same brush set and chose French knot number two. Now I wanted these French knots to be yellow and I wanted it to be really dense. So it's very important to make sure that you're in a separate layer. And I think that I did not actually get that part on film I had a bit of a camera issue but I'm in a separate layer here on top of everything else and I'm just tapping these French knots into that layer and you can see here I've got this new layer that I had made so I'm adding a new layer on top of that and choosing a different French knot number three and so having being that it's in a separate layer I can then continue layering these French knots over top of each other. So if they were all in the same layer, they would start to look darker where they're overlapping. You can kind of see it happen there. So it's important to have them in separate layers from each other if you're going to be building them up as I plan to do in this piece. So with that that other one that I've, the French knot number three that I've chosen, I'm just kind of adding another layer of French knots here and just kind of filling in the gaps wherever I can. And then I'm going to do the same thing. And you can see here, this is what happens when you overlap them. So it's important not to overlap them. And the reason that they look funny when you overlap them is because I have actually made the embroidery stamps to um, stand up on backgrounds like this. So usually with a, a stamp and procreate, it would be somewhat see-through but I did a little bit of extra magic on that and I wanted to have it stand out. So I went to my colors in the value tab and I just adjusted that yellow to be a little bit lighter. I added a new layer and I went to a different French knot number three and I decided that was a bit too light. So I went back to my colors and adjusted ever so slightly until I was happy with that different yellow that was coming out. So in this third layer, there's now three different layers with French knots in them. I'm just continuing to fill in the gaps and I wanted it to kind of be like this dense uh, pasture full of yellow roses. And so I'm just continuing to dot these into all of the gaps. So now I wanted to do the same thing in blue. So I went and chose a blue color and went back to my French knot number two. However, at this point, I realized I should probably put those three yellow layers together in a group. So I did that and named that yellow roses. So now I'm free to make a new layer on top of that, which will become the blue roses layer. And so with that blue color selected and French knot number two, I'm doing the same concept in this gap over here, but with blue and green colors. And over in the corners, I realized it's kind of a tight squeeze, so I just made that brush a bit smaller and continued to add smaller blue roses along the ends. So now I'm adding a new layer and choosing a light green color, French knot number three, 
and I'm just going to continue to do the same pattern that I did on the other side but with blue and green this time so this is the second layer and then I'll add another layer with another green color as well So with that done, I went ahead and highlighted all three of those new blue and green rose layers. And I just named that, grouped it together and named it so that I know where I'm at. So now I'm adding a new layer and in my embroidery folder, scrolling down to wonky satin stitch number one, the dual color version. And so in my colors, I'm choosing a dark green and a light green. And I wanted to just add some embellishments along some of the hillsides. You can see that that hillside there kind of had some white patches coming through. So I'm just using the satin stitch to kind of fill the gaps and just add some interest. So the wonky stitch kind of gave me the idea to add some stripes to some of these hills. So I went and chose my back stitch number one in the dual color version and chose a dark green and a yellow. And I've added a new layer. And so on this open light green patch, I wanted to add some stripes. So I'm moving that layer down below the roses because I don't want the stripes to go on up over the roses. And I'm just renaming that hill stripes. And that layer below it was actually um, the hill curls. And so I had never named that one. So I just went ahead and named that as well. So what I mean by hill stripes is that I just wanted to kind of make, trace some lines along this area and just have them kind of bulging in the middle so that it looks like there's a hill there. And at this point, I decided to move that below the curls because I didn't want it to show up over the curls. So I'm just continuing to add these lines. So at this point, I decided that it wasn't good enough to have that layer where it was because it was still above the entire background. So I opened up the background group and then I put that layer with the hill stripes below a lot of the other layers just so that it would kind of blend in underneath instead of showing up on top because I just wanted to come out only on this this one section. So I'm still kind of experimenting with where I want that layer and I just moved it up one to see if I like that. And I'm gonna go ahead and add some hill stripes over on the left side as well. So at this point I'm switching to a blue and a green still with that back stitch and adding more hill stripes over on the right side on top of this yellow. I just wanted to change the variety in the, the colors and not have quite such a difference in the colors there. So I've finished with that and I've gone and added a new layer on top of everything else. And I'm still kind of playing around with my layers a little bit. Um, I'm kind of deciding where things fit best so I took that hill curls and I put it into the background to because it really is kind of part of the background. And I added a new layer right above the hill stripes. And this new layer is going to be for more stitching. So I went down to my multi-stitch number three dual color brush. And I still have that dark green and blue selected. And so I wanted to go down into this yellow area and add some stitching here. And then I went on to do the same stitching over on the left side in a slightly smaller size. So going back to my colors, I'm switching it up, choosing a yellow and a light green and going back to my brushes, I wanted to choose a different multi-stitch brush. So I went with multi-stitch number one, dual color. And so now I'm going to this very bottom most layer, but I realized that that is actually underneath of where I want it to be. So I brought my layer up a little bit and now I'm adding these stripes on top of this felting that I did previously in the very one of the very first steps. 
and I'm just continuing to add these yellow stitches on top of the green in different areas. So now as the final step, I wanted to add some sunflowers. So I added a new layer. I renamed that sunflowers and I wanted to have kind of a Van Gogh inspired look in the middle. So I went down to my satin stitches in the embroidery folder and I went to satin stitch number three, stable size. And so what stable size means is that it doesn't change size with pressure. So I'm using that brush to go around in a circle to make kind of a fun little sunflower. And so changing the size as needed, I'm just adding these sunflowers just around this green section in the middle here. So now I've gone back to my colors and chosen a slightly lighter yellow. And I'm just continuing with the same pattern of creating these flowers by going around in circles and changing the size as needed and just continuing to do the same in the light yellow color in varied sizes over on the left and down here at the bottom as well and now switching back to that darker yellow color that i started with originally i'm adding it in so that we have light yellow and dark yellow flowers all kind of mixed in together and now to add the center of the sunflowers, I added a new layer and scrolling all the way back up in the embroidery folder to my stamps, I chose satin stitch dot number one and an orange color. And so I'm going to dot this stamp in the middle of these flowers in order to have a center in the flowers. And that was too big, so I made that smaller. And that seemed about right that size. So I went ahead and continued adding that orange dot to the middle of the darker yellow flowers. And just to change it up a bit, I chose a light green color with that same satin stitch dot stamp and the same layer. And I'm just adding that one to the middle of these lighter yellow flowers. So that concludes our whimsical fiber art landscape and I hope that you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching if you got this far through all the chaos. I hope that it gave you some inspiration for some projects of your own. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.